Hidden in the African savanna is a tree as vast and old as time. Inside it lives the all-knowing Funzi, part robot, part sage, but nobody knows her true age. With help from her young friends at Team Sayari, they learn how to help the planet around me. Armed with cues and clues, they look to solve Funzi's missions with trailblazing adventures and planet-saving expeditions. Snorkels and goggles. Where's the goggles? Ta da! Beach day! You got them? Yes, I got them. Great. Put them over here. I think we've got everything now. This is gonna be so much fun. Funzie's made a preparation list of everything we need to do. This seems like a lot, Funzie. I have read extensively about diving, so I am now an expert and I want to make sure you are 100% prepared. I wonder what we'll see under the sea. Weird and wonderful animals. Well, lucky for us, that's exactly where we will be exploring on today's mission, Life Under the Sea. Yay! Mission time! Mission time! But before we take a deep dive into our oceans, let's hear from some of our friends about what strange creatures they think lurk under the seas. What is the strangest creature under the sea? Maybe shark? Um, hmm, let me think about this. Probably a piranha because of its teeth. Is a sea urchin because he has lots of spikes. The dolphin because they have a strange voice. Octopus because it has so many tentacles. Is the spider crab because it's a, it's a crab and a spider and I've never seen that before. You say? Yup. How does that mask feel? It feels like it's sucking my face. I think it's meant to feel like that, so it doesn't leak when we're underwater. According to my database, you don't want your mask to be too loose because that can cause it to leak. And the snorkel. Do you, like, put this in your mouth? Yep, you just bite onto the rubbery bit. Like this? Yep. That'll take some getting used to. Just so you know, girls, I will be needing a full and detailed report on your time in the sea. You're giving us homework, Funzi? Consider it part of your mission, like these clues. Clue time! Today's clues are a kettle and a shopping list. A don't touch sign and a compass. What does that have to do with life under the sea? A trip to Cape Town, South Africa is a great place to start. Khakiso has been on the hunt for a mysterious sea creature. You're gonna love this story. Patching you through. Oh, hey there, Team Sayori. My name is Khakiso and I'm here at Miller's Point in Cape Town. And I've heard a rumor that there's a mermaid somewhere here. So my mission by Fuzzy today is to go and find that mermaid. Come along. Yes, I am. It's so lovely to meet you. My name is Khatiso and I am on a mission to find you. Wow. Welcome to my home and it is lovely to meet you. Should we find a place to sit? Let's. So, are you really a mermaid? Well, what did you see? Okay, I see you. I see you. I became the Black Mermaid because when I started diving, no one around me looked like me. And so I needed to create the needed representation. But most importantly, creating awareness around our oceans. What lives in there, her challenges, and what it means to save our oceans. What inspired you to develop your passion for the ocean wildlife? So I went on the snorkel trip and it was so incredible to see the life that was under there. There were these beautiful, colorful fish and then of course the kelp forests followed and they are magical and it's just the most beautiful world. 
but you also get to see the challenges, the threats that our oceans are facing. You come across plastic, litter, and then there's just climate change. You can see that the oceans are warming and our corals are going to be in trouble. What can we do to help the issues of pollution and climate change, especially in the ocean? I would say two things. Say no to single-use plastic, anything. That's number one. But number two, the fish that you eat, make sure that it is abundant. We do not eat endangered fish species. And if there's one last thing that you wish you could just tell the world, what would it be? We need to protect our oceans. Our oxygen comes from the oceans. It is all dependent on the health of our oceans. Would you like to go swim? Let us go swim. Wow, I just feel so inspired by the Black Mermaid and she's really motivated me to do a lot more to help protect our seas. Mission accomplished and back to you, Team Snowy. I wish you could come with us, Funzi. I'm sure you'd really enjoy the peace and quiet of being under the sea. I'm sure I would, but how tranquil can it be right now with all the challenges the seas and oceans are currently facing? Plastics, again, and pollution again and climate change that includes global warming hey wait that's our clue which one the kettle humans are responsible for the increase in global temperatures i get it like the way we use a kettle to heat up water clue solved. good work girls climate change has led to warmer more acidic seas which is weakening and killing off corals, which are important habitats and food sources for several marine plants and animals. One clue down, three to go. And now it's time for some more amazing animals. Number three, the amazing seahorse. Of all the Earth's creatures, the seahorse has to be one of the most magical and beautiful. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> Let's not get too excited. Seahorses are actually quite slow. Well, excuse me, I studied at Diani riding school. No, I mean they only have a top speed of about one and a half meters per hour. They move about by using small fins on their backs and on the back of their heads. These fish get their name from the ancient Greeks Hippocampus. Hippo equals horse. Campos equals sea monster. You can find them in lots of places where the seawater is warm. All around the world, seahorses are among the only species on earth where the male actually gives birth, sometimes up to 1,500 babies. Daddy, 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 daddy. Quiet! But please don't confuse them with a rocking horse. Hey, who says I don't like to rock? The seahorse, what an amazing animal. I hope our next field report is as magical as the last one. Sheila is on standby in Diani on the Kenyan coastline, patching you through. Jumbo Team Sayari, my name is Sheila Sheldon and welcome to Kenya. Funze sent me to the wonderful coastal town of Diani to meet Lea Moenye. She knows so much about life under the sea and especially dun, 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 turtles. Do you know she's a diver? Whoa, I can sense a day of adventure. Hi Lea, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm also good. And I would like to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. What do you do here? I'm the project coordinator for the Olive Ridley project here in the Ani, right. and we work with turtles. So, what got you into diving and turtles? Just like any other kid, so watching National Geographic documentaries. I found myself wanting to dive. I started diving in 2016, but working with turtles, I started in 2019. So like, what's the difference in the ocean since then and now? Like, So since I started diving in 2019, yeah. there are some changes that have been happening. One being pollution, that's from plastics, and from runoffs from the rivers. 
and uh, most of these turtles, even the green turtles when they are young, they feed on jellyfish and they will confuse the jellyfish to plastics. Oh, no. So we've seen cases where turtles are feeding on plastics and they end up dying. And another thing is the light pollution on the beach. Most of the hotels should limit the light that's on the beach because once the hatchlings come out, the hatchlings will follow the moon. So if there is a light which is very bright, they will make it to the land and they will be eaten by cats and dogs and birds and crabs. So what are the importance of turtles in the whole ecosystem? Turtles are keystone species. These are species that we can't do without. We have the hawksbill, which feeds on sponges. So if there is no hawksbill, the sponges will overgrow and they will cover the low-growing corals. We will not have a windbreak. And those will cause flooding. We have the green turtles, which feed on seagrass. So once they don't feed on that, the seagrass will overgrow. So what can Team Sayari do to help? Team Sayari can do one thing by creating awareness, educating people. Obviously. Second, get ourselves involved in beach cleanups. We'll definitely spread awareness about it and help the turtles. I'm grateful for that. Turtles do so much for the environment that we should protect them. I think I'm considering being a marine biologist so I can protect the turtles. Oh, wait. I have solved the clue. Have you? Oh, Sheila is so lucky. Swimming with turtles. And meeting Leia, whose journey through conservationism started by turning on the TV and watching National Geographic. I want Team Sari to inspire people like that. Especially when you hear scary things like six out of seven species of turtle are endangered. I think it's mostly because baby sea turtles struggle to get to the sea at night. Hey, I think you just solved our clue. Oh yeah, I see it. It's the compass, which helps us to find our way when we're lost. Clue Good work, Team S. Sea turtle hatchlings use the natural light of the moon to guide them to the ocean. However, the lights from coastal developments like hotels, homes, and other buildings close to the beach can confuse the turtles into heading the wrong way. That's terrible. I think we should gather all our friends and create a Save Turtles campaign. Yeah! That sounds like a good plan, Team S. I will support you in any way I can. Thank you, Funzi. But you can't come to the beach. Yeah, Funzi. Your lights would just confuse the turtle hatchlings even more. Oh. Funzi! 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 Funzi, come back. We were only joking. Funzi, mean it. <laughs> gotcha! I thought you were gone for good. Please don't do that again. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. Not when it's time for Funzi's box. Funzi's box. Jumbo Team Sayari, this is Funzi's box, where we turn ordinary things into the most awesome and inventive creations. Today, we'll make a spectacular under the sea mobile. You'll need different sized paper towel tubes, scissors, colored markers, paints, paint brushes, a glue stick, a hole punch, twine or strong string, and colored paper. Take our larger paper towel tube to make a larger fish. Press it down firmly. Draw a semicircle shape on top of the tube. Cut along the line that you drew. Be careful with scissors. And if you're not confident, you can always ask an adult to help you. These semicircles are going to be the heads of the fish. It's time to make the fins of the fish. Take the paper towel tube and cut two slits on either side of the tube and make sure the head of the fish is facing you. Fold each of the flaps inwards to make the fins. Take both of your flaps and fold them back outwards like this. Then oh, wow. press on either side of your tube to make a hollow center. Take your flaps and push them inwards like this. Flatten the fish. These are starting to look like fish now, right? Yay! Time to make the octopus. Take your colored paper and make seven equal slits. 
take any cylindrical object, it can be a pen, a paintbrush or a marker, and use it to roll your slits upwards. It should look something like this. Take your glue stick and glue one end of the octopus to the other. Roll it around gently and then press it down firmly. I'm going to use a hole punch to punch the holes in the bottom and the top of our sea creatures. Time to decorate. I'm going to use bright colours so that it can be as colourful as possible. It's time to bring life to our underwater sea creatures. I'm going to draw some eyes and a mouth. Now I'm going over the outlines with black. For the mouth, I'm going to use red. For a finishing touch, I'm going to use the white paper punches as eyes. I'm going to use the black marker to decorate this red fish. Put the paper punch clippings to make the eye look more realistic. Add some patterns to his body to give it definition. Be as creative as you want with your design. And last but not least, I'll paint some octopus suckers on its tentacle. It's time to twine all of our underwater sea creatures together. And there you have it, an under the sea room mobile. You can hang them anywhere you want in your room as a reminder of the sea animals that you need to protect. Bye bye, Team Sayari. Why are we doing this again? Because we need to be fit for diving. So, okay, that's it for me. I'll just make a few paper mobiles at home. Hang them in my room. I don't even have the energy for that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have another joke. Please no. don't. Which sea animals laugh the most? Octopuses, because they've got 10 tickles. <laughs> oh, goodness. that the Great Barrier Reef stretches 2,300 kilometers and makes up the world's largest coral reef system. It's wow. so huge, it can actually be seen from outer space. It supports a crazy amount of diverse marine life, including many vulnerable and endangered species, some of which may only be found in its reef system. Some bits of coral are sharp and spiky and they can hurt you. Yes, but coral is also alive and very fragile. Even the slightest disturbance can damage it. That's it! The don't touch sign! You're right! Clue salt! Clue salt! Great job, Team S! The golden rule of diving at the Great Barrier Reef is to look but not touch because this fragile ecosystem is home to over 1,500 species of fish and other vertebrates. One more clue to go. The shopping list. Next up is Gibbs Kuguru, a shark expert and our trailblazer on today's mission. Patching him through. I'm Gibbs Kuguru. I'm a Nat Geo explorer and I love sharks. Our sharks are in trouble. For years, humans have been killing sharks through overfishing and climate change. Unfortunately, we don't really know how bad it is for sharks yet. So I'm here learning about their population so we can understand how to save them. Come with me as we explore planet ocean. I became interested in diving with sharks because when I saw people destroying their home and stealing their teeth, I knew I had to act. And I think most people think only of great white sharks, but there are many different unique sharks, such as the leopard sharks, puff adder shy sharks, and pajama sharks. And all of these sharks need our understanding and protection. And I wanted to help them. You know, this is exactly why I do what I do. I just got out of the water with some of the most beautiful, amazing pajama sharks. I got a tiny piece of their skin tissue. And this is unusual because she always comes out at night. We got really lucky to find her today. 
When I get to the lab with that little piece of that pajama shark, I actually am able to look at its DNA, which is hiding in every one of its cells. This DNA is going to tell me whether the populations of these pajama sharks are actually growing or collapsing. And based on this, we can learn exactly what these sharks need to be better protected in our blue oceans. Our oceans are in trouble, but you can help change that. By learning about sharks and all the creatures that live in the sea, we can help protect the planet ocean with Team Ciari. You know what I like about this mission? What? That we get to meet amazing people who do amazing things. Just like Gibbs, who is a genetic... 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 What? Genetic... Now you've got me confused. <laughs> Geneticist. Right, what we said. Indeed. Genetics is the study of genes. Genes are the basic unit of heredity, which encode the traits that get passed down from one generation to the next. Then I think I know how that comes into our last clue. A shopping list? How? We use a shopping list when we go to the supermarket or to the duca. Just like the way Gibbs studies genes to keep track of fish and shark population. Mission complete. Mission complete. Great work, Team Sayari. That was the last clue. But what would our world be like without our blue oceans and seas? It's time for A World Without. Whether on land, in the air, or in the sea, there are animals of plenty, as far as the eye can see. From sharks to sea turtles to coral reefs, deep beyond the shore and the kelp forest, a major part of the ecosystem's core. With special features like fins and skin that stings, these ocean animals are quite spectacular, unforgettable living things. See, a world without sea animals would lack a fundamental part. Their importance is undeniable. You must keep them close to your heart. Creatures of the sea and ocean literally keep us alive, cleaning out the air we breathe, helping us all thrive. Containing kelp forests that fight climate change and the coral reefs, keeping marine life within range. We must protect marine life at all costs. Never let them fall. That's why you and I have to answer the Seas Conservation Call. I've learned a lot about the ecosystems that exist under the sea. Me too! I never knew there was so much life underwater. The biodiversity that is present in our oceans is just as important and just as impactful to our entire planet. And even more important, Oceans cover 71% of the Earth's surface, remember? You are right to remind us of that, Marita. Also important to note, the oceans are estimated to contain up to 97% of the entire planet's water. I wish we could have just a little bit of it to practice our snorkeling. I know a place nearby with a swimming pool where we can test our gear. All right. Is the mission over? It's not. It's not over. It's Finished. Get it? So, so bad. Run! <laughs>